Hi, hello everyone. I am Jensen Parish Hall, Jensen Hall. Most people know me by Jensen Parish. Um, and something that I love to share when people ask, um, like, share something about you, something that I treasure and love is that I served an American Sign Language mission. Raise your hand if you know ASL. Is there anyone in here that knows ASL? You guys rock, it's like heavenly language. Anyway, so I served an ASL mission in the Washington, Vancouver mission. And in the Washington Vancouver mission, we had a motto, and it was something that we always shared. It was like a daily thing. We always shared it at every meeting, every day, and the motto was this. God doesn't do random. God doesn't do random. And I love that. I also heard, I once heard a quote, it was from Elder Holland, Elder Jeffrey R. Holland, and I tried to find the exact quote, but it was something like this. He says, God is the ultimate strategist because he places people in your lives and places people where they need to be when they need to be there. And I love that, and I came to understand that in my own life. Um, and I hope to share this story with you, and I hope that as you guys listen, and as I share, um, please listen to, listen to the Spirit. Listen to see if there's anything that you need to know. And if there's things going on in your life, think about what God has in store for you, what plan he has for you. So along with my mission. The night that I was set apart, it was February 19th. February 19, 2013, I was set apart, and my whole family were all gathered in the state, state president's office, and he, he set me apart. That's the sign, by the way. Set me apart. And he, uh, he said something that was super interesting, and I never forgot. He said, as you serve, rely on your family, for they will be a huge strength to you, especially your brother who was on his mission. My brother Ian was serving his mission. He's been out for about six months. So I got that promise. Um, I went on my mission and just like most people, most missionaries, especially sister missionaries, I started feeling completely inadequate. Didn't feel like I was doing anything right. I wasn't learning the language fast enough. I didn't feel like I was good enough. And so what was me? I went to my, uh, my zone leader and I asked for a blessing. And he gave me a blessing. And in the blessing, I just simply told him, I'm just, I'm discouraged, I, I just need comfort, I need to know that what I'm doing is good and that I'm good enough, you know. So he's giving me the blessing, and he is just doing it, and then all of a sudden he just kind of pauses. He just stops, and forever seems to pass, and he says, Jensen. First of all, he's been in Sister Paris this whole time. Then he said, Jensen. Do not worry about home. Your family will be protected. And I thought, all right, cool, sounds good, thank you. Thanks for the reminder. Um, so then I, a few months passed by, and Elder Holland came to our mission, and he was fantastic, and he's giving his talk, and we're all gathered there. And at the end, he gave an apostolic blessing, and in the blessing, he said, quote, as you serve with all your heart, mind, mind and strength, your family will be protected, and those who have fallen away will come back as you serve. And I was like, sweet, three, three witnesses. All right, I'm good. I'm doing all that I can, all this stuff. And come February 23rd, 2014, that all changed. I remember I was in my apartment. It was 10.30 at night. I was in an apartment full of other sister missionaries, and there was a knock on the door. And we opened it, and it was my mission president and his beloved wife, President and Sister Taylor. And their faces were just grim. I, I can't think of a better word, just grim. They come inside, and they, they pulled me, sat me down on the couch, and my mission president, with tears, he's, he's crying. Now I'm, I'm concerned. He said, there was an accident back in your home. It was carbon monoxide and both your parents and your two younger brothers were killed. And I, I don't remember the rest of that night, honestly. It, it's a blur. And um, we, we were there. Next thing I know, I'm all packed up. We're going to the mission home. A blessing was given. Tears were shed. It was mostly just shock. And there's just all this stuff going on. And I have no idea what, 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 to, what to think of it. And finally, I'm, I'm in my bed. I'm all alone. And it's dark. And as I was laying in bed, all the questions starts coming, you know. What's gonna happen? Does Ian know? Um, where are we gonna go? Um, what's gonna happen to me? And then the last one, 
what did I do wrong? I was promised that if I did everything that I could, they would be protected. What did I do wrong? And I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about that, and this clear, distinct thought came into my head, and I know it was the Spirit, and it's, he said, he, I'm going to say he, Jensen, this is going to be hard. This is going to be really hard, and I need you to make a decision right now. Are you going to be bitter and angry, or are you going to trust me and be better? So I made that decision that night. Whatever was going to happen, ultimately, I was going to trust him. I was going to be okay. I went home a couple days later, met my brother, flew into Pocatello that whole week. Crazy. We had a funeral. It was a huge community event. Like, everyone came. It was wonderful. We had so much support. But by the end of that week, it was Friday was the funeral, Saturday. It kind of, after everything kind of died down, my brother and I were talking and we came up with, we were wondering, like, what do we do? What do we do? And he ultimately decided to go back on his mission, and I stayed home. I stayed home because I felt like I needed to start writing. I needed to write a blog. Um, and so I did. I, I started a blog called A New Normal, and I just opened up and I shared my raw feelings. Actually, I started it today. Three years ago today, I started my first post. And I just shared my feelings, my raw feelings with of grief, depression, anxiety, the good, the bad, the ugly, the wonderful, the miracles, and relating it to the plan of salvation. Why it was so important to me that I knew that my family was an eternal family? Why it was so important for me to know that Heavenly Father had a plan? And I just, I just wrote, I had no idea what was going to happen. People actually read it. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, People read, it was, it was so weird, okay, fine. And people started messaging me and telling me, like, your blog has helped me with this and your blog has helped me with this. Can I share this blog in, in a young women talk? And then it was, will you come speak at Girls Camp? Will you come speak at this youth conference and this community event? And I was so humbled and blessed, but I was also very overwhelmed. And as I was doing these events and talking, I kind of just went and was like, here's my story. And the gospel's true, and the name is just Christ the man. And I, like, that's what I would do. And I still have that question of what, why am I here? Why am I here? And why is Ian here? And why, why is our family gone? Why is Keegan and Liam and Bill and Ross Paris gone? Um, and then one day, I was, I just, I had this question. And it was a guilt. It was a guilt factor. I felt guilty. I felt guilty that I was here, and they were not. Then one night I was doing my own personal scripture study. I was reading in the Book of Mormon, and I'm going to read the whole, not the whole Book of Mormon, we're not going to do that. I'm going to read the, the two verses that I read. It's in 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 2, and this is Lehi. He's talking to all of his sons, and he's talking to Jacob. Now this is the first verse. It says, Now Jacob, I speak unto you, thou art my firstborn in the days of my tribulation in the wilderness. And behold, in thy childhood thou hast suffered affliction and much sorrow because of the rudeness of thy brethren. And I was like, hey, that's me. I'm, a, I'm having afflictions. I'm having hard times. W what else are you going to share? And so, the second verse, this is the one I want to focus on. It says, Nevertheless, Jacob, my firstborn in the wilderness, thou knowest the greatness of God, and he shall consecrate thine afflictions for thy gain. And I read that, and the word that stood out to me was consecrate. That's a word that we hear all the time in the church, but I didn't really, I knew what it meant, but I didn't really know what it meant. So I looked it up. Um, I tried to look in the Bible dictionary, couldn't find anything, so I went to a Webster dictionary, Google, and this is what it said. It was super interesting. The definition for consecrate that I found is dedicate to a sacred purpose. So I was like, what would happen if I took that definition and replaced consecrate? Well, how would that change? And this is what it would say, condensed. Nevertheless, thou knowest the greatness of God, and he shall dedicate to a sacred purpose thine affliction for thy gain. And that was an answer. It was the answer that I needed. I knew at that moment that I needed to arise, that I needed to understand that this trial that I was going through 
was going to dedicate me to something, to a, a sacred purpose. It was going to dedicate me to become better. It was going to dedicate my family to become better. It was going to dedicate me to be with my, my family for eternity. And I was so excited. And this became my message. This is what, this became my testimony, that I know that our trials are not by accident. They are dedicated to a sacred purpose. And so as I continue to blog, that's what I would write about, to understand that our trials are not by accident, that we can be dedicated if we remember the greatness of God, if we remember him through our trials, if we decide that we're going to be better and not bitter, we're going to remember him, we're going to do the things that he asks us to do, we're going to keep going forward, those trials are for our gain. And I, I love that. I just love that. So with that, I had many experiences, and I'm not, I, I would be lying if I told you that I was always so good and I was always better. The last three years, it's been three years, there's been ups and downs, there's been good, better moments, there's been some bitter moments, and I found that when I was better, when I decided that I was going to remember him, remember his greatness, that was when those trials, the little trials that happened in between, helped me become better, and ultimately, um, remember, God doesn't do random, and he always, he, he's the ultimate strategist. He plays with people in our lives. So, about two years ago, May 15, 2015, I got married, and it was fantastic. And we got married in the Logan Temple. Um, my husband, Jacob, we actually met a while ago, but he's always been there. Look at those eyes, I mean, really. So, <laughs> we got married in the Logan Temple, and it's another, it's another start, another testament to me that families are eternal that our child are consecrated. And he and I have made that promise that we, no matter what, as we're going through things or we're going through trials, we will remember to, to consecrate our performance, to remember that our trials can be consecrated, to remember the greatness of God. This is my testimony. I know that he lives. I know that he loves us. And I know that he is aware. I know that he is the ultimate strategist and he puts people where they need to be, when they need to be there, both here and on the other side of the veil. My parents and my brothers, Bill and Ross Parrish, Keegan and Liam Parrish, they have done what they needed to do here, and they have already moved on. They're where they need to be. And I learned over time that Heavenly Father kept his promise. They, he did protect them. They're in the safest place that I could possibly imagine right now. They were good people. They are safe. I know that he loves us. I know that he is aware. I know that our, as we remember him and we allow our trials to be consecrated, we will see what that sacred purpose is. He has a plan for all of us and he has a plan for you, a very specific, detailed plan. Be where you need to be when you're supposed to be there. I testify these things and I say these things.